I feel nauseous, believe me. Never had a lot of sh come easy. Had to work hard, struggle just to be me. Had to rise up just so they could see me. Did what I had to do just to feed me. And what was left over, I put towards my dreaming. But the only thing in life that has meaning are the things you gotta work for, believe me. Take into your hands a plan, your own hands can land your own brand And damn, I feel like no one takes accountability They want the credibility, convincingly unwilling to put in the f hours It takes to get some power, don't be f***ing sour Take a cold shower, scream until you're louder Work until you're prouder and f*** all the doubters They're just your downers I swear to God they all let me down I always fought just to wear the crown off at these f***ing clowns Who were all taught they deserve an ounce It's only worth it if you work for it It's only worth it if you work for it I won't stop till they hear me now I won't stop till I wear the crown Welcome back to the Goddess of Mystery and Mayhem. I will be bringing different topics to my channel to bring a variety of topics here. If there is a certain story you like me to do for any of you put it in the comments and I will do it. Okay, let's begin our story. I felt we all as adults can discuss this topic without name calling or attacks on one another. For context our founding father Thomas Jefferson had a reason for separation of church and state his reasons are as follows. After the American Revolution, there was a strong effort in Virginia to reinstitute church taxes to promote religion, led by Patrick Henry and supported by Edmund Pendleton, Spencer Rowan, Benjamin Harrison, John Marshall, and Richard Henry Lee among others. That effort almost succeeded in having a general assessment adopted, a tax to benefit all Christian sections. This proposal was opposed by James Madison and, in absentia, Jefferson, serving in Paris as ambassador. Beating back the effort to impose religious taxes in a sometimes bitter legislative battle, the triumphant Madison was able to have Jefferson's statute adopted, one of the great successes of Jefferson's life. Jefferson reported triumphantly that the legislative effort to insert Jesus Christ in the preamble to the Virginia statute was defeated, establishing that religious freedom was meant to comprehend, within the mantle of its protection, the Jew and the Gentile, the Christian and Mahometan, the Hindu and infidel of every denomination. Jefferson's demand for strict separation and religious freedom does not mean that he was irreligious. This canard irritated Jefferson. He explained, the priests indeed have heretofore thought proper to ascribe to me religious or rather anti-religious sentiments of their fabric, but such as soothed their resentments against the act of Virginia for establishing religious freedom. They wished him to be thought atheist, deist, or devil, who could advocate freedom from their religious dictations. But I have never thought religion a concern purely between our God and our consciences, for which we were accountable to him, and not to the priests. Jefferson wanted a strict separation of church and state. Moms for Liberty is run by Tina Deskovich and Tiffany Justice, two former school board members serving in neighboring Florida counties. The group was incorporated on January 1st and has since grown to 135 chapters in 35 states, with 56,000 members and supporters, according to the organization's founders, per The Post. Moms for Liberty has county-specific chapters across the country that target local school board meetings, school board members, administrators, and teachers. The group advocates stripping districts of protective COVID-19 measures and modifying classroom curriculum to exclude the teaching of critical race theory, CRT, and sex education, all in the name of parental rights. Moms for Liberty parental rights mean strategically harassing public schools, on October 4, Attorney General Merrick Garland released a memo condemning a disturbing spike in harassment, intimidation, and threats of violence against school administrators, 
board members, teachers, and staff. Although Moms for Liberty is not the only factor in this spike in harassment, the group grew in membership during the same time period that school board members across the United States started facing an increase in threats from angry parents and community members. Jennifer Jenkins, a Brevard County School Board member who unseated Moms for Liberty co-founder Tina Deskovich, traced harassment in her district back to the beginning of Moms for Liberty protests during school board meetings. Writing in the Washington Post, Jenkins noted that the group first targeted the county's LGBTQ guidelines that protected students by allowing for the right to dress and use bathrooms according to the gender they identify with. According to Jenkins, parents reportedly began calling school board members pedophiles and threatening them, saying, we're coming at you like a freight train. We are going to make you beg for mercy. If you thought January 6th was bad. Wait until you see what we have for you. She was later targeted by Florida State Representative Randy Fine, a Moms for Liberty supporter and donor, who posted Jenkins' cell phone number on Facebook and instructed his followers to stand up for your rights, call Jenkins right now and let her know exactly how you feel. She said someone even falsely reported Jenkins for child abuse, prompting an investigation from the Florida Department of Children and Families an administrator of the Facebook group for the Livingston County, Michigan, chapter posted a threatening message directed to anyone backing Biden's review of school board threats and violence. Not a single person on the right side of the aisle better be backing this. If they are they better be prepared to be removed 1776 style. The 1776 reference is about the American Revolution, in far-right circles, 1776 often implies the threat of political violence. This sort of conduct is no surprise given the previous behavior of one of the group's co-founders. According to Vero News, a local news outlet for Indian River County, Florida, co-founder Justice visited her fifth-grade son's school to oppose the district's COVID-19 mask mandate and was being so disruptive and disrespectful in her interactions with Beachland teachers and administrators that the school's superintendent warned she could be barred from the campus. After Justice's visit, the district superintendent wrote a memo to the school board, promising that if this behavior continues, the district will initiate the process to trespass this individual through law enforcement. Justice's behavior was not new. She was also criticized for her lack of professionalism while serving on the school board because of her frequent inappropriate outbursts, and she even attacked local news coverage of the school board during her term. Funding, more than just t-shirt sales, in a Washington Post interview, co-founder Deskovich dodged a question about the group receiving financial support from GOP donors, saying, if someone wants to give us a million dollars, we would take it, but it's just not happening. She claimed that instead, the organization is funded by individual memberships and proceeds from t-shirt sales. There are few if any, financial disclosures available to review since the group is newly incorporated. But there is ample evidence, via donor lists posted from events and political action committee finances, to suggest that the group is supported by far more than just t-shirt sales and membership fees. For example, Moms for Liberty Incorporated, the group's official name, is the recipient of funds from Conservatives for Good Government, a right-wing Florida political action committee. The group also hosts several high-dollar fundraisers, such as an event on June 15 featuring former Fox News host Megyn Kelly. An archived version of the event page and a list of top sponsors show that the name sponsors alone gave $57,000 and that doesn't include general admission tickets, $50, bonus promotional packs, $30, and any anonymous donors. The event also boasted several GOP-affiliated donors, including Florida State Senator Debbie Mayfield and Florida House of Representative members Randy Fine and Tyler Sirois. Moms for Liberty presents itself as a grassroots effort led by parents, but in reality, the organization is well-connected with a variety of Republican politicians and entities. The group's most notable GOP affiliation comes from Christian Ziegler, vice chairman of the Florida Republican Party. Ziegler spoke to the Washington Post and praised Moms for Liberty, saying, I have been trying for a dozen years to get 20, 
and 30-year-old females involved with the Republican Party, and getting that demographic was a heavy lift. But now Moms for Liberty has done it for me. He also said he expects Moms for Liberty's members to, as the Post put it, become foot soldiers for Florida Gov. Ron DeSantis' re-election campaign. Ziegler served as a media surrogate on Donald Trump's 2016 presidential campaign and was once a Heritage Foundation congressional fellow. Why am I highlighting this group? Well for several reasons one being no one's ideology should be telling any parent how they can raise their children. I am including left, right, and extremes groups in this as well. Let me be honest here when I grew up our schools taught us history, social studies, and sex education. Why don't we see as Americans that we all want what's best for our children? These groups need us to fight each other and not come together and find solutions. Don't get me wrong there are groups out there spewing hate, we just have to see it and change it. I have come to the end of this story am so hoping you all enjoyed it, till we meet again have a blessed day or night. Sending out love to you all. I feel nauseous, believe me Never had a lot of shit come easy Had to work hard, struggle just to be me Had to rise up just so they could see me Did what I had to do just to feed me And what was left over I put towards my dreaming But the only thing in life that has meaning Are the things you gotta work for, believe me Take into your hands a plan Your own hands can land your own brand And damn, I feel like no one takes accountability They want the credibility Convincingly unwilling to put in the f***ing hours It takes